This is the Germont British News, presenting the world to the world. Heading for home through the South Atlantic, HMS Vanguard brings the Royal Travellers to the postscript of their tour, a visit to the lonely island of St Helena. Coming ashore, the Royal Family are received by the Governor, who gave them a loyal address on behalf of the 5,000 inhabitants. Later followed a visit to Longwood, the house where Napoleon lived in exile and where he died in 1821. One of the oldest inhabitants was presented to their majesties, and here he is, trying to make up his mind whether it's lunchtime or not. Finally, a visit to Signal Hill, where the world's longest banister rail provides a sport that should make every small boy green with envy. A last look at the fine view from the summit, and the visit to the ocean outpost was at an end. Entering the Bay of Biscay, the princesses took a turn at the wheel and for a short time shared the job of keeping the battleship on her course. Now it was time for the official leave-taking, which ended with a presentation from members of the ship's company. For the king, a leather wallet bearing Vanguard's badge. For the queen and princesses, brooches in the form of the same crest, and to the crew's delight, Her Majesty decided to wear hers at once. A happy ceremony marked by a striking camera record of the royal family with their vanguard shipmates. Yes, the end of the voyage was in sight as in bright sunshine vanguard and her escort moved slowly up the channel. All day the crowds had been gathering along the Portsmouth waterfront and as the guns on shore began the royal salute, nearly half a million people prepared to give the returning travellers a glad welcome. And now, with her crew dressing ship, Vanguard glides into harbour, while from their place above the gun turret, the royal family return their people's greeting. Just a hundred days had passed since that snowy February morning of the royal departure, a time of parting in which their majesties have never been far from their people's thoughts. Waiting at the quayside, the Duke of Gloucester sees the gangway placed in position before going aboard to welcome the royal family home. now followed a whole series of reunions as members of the crew are welcomed by their own waiting families and the joy of Vanguard's return is complete. A final word of goodbye and as the royal family leave the ship, the crew pay a last rousing tribute. Stepping once again onto British soil, the royal family drove to the bomb-shattered guild hall amid the sounds of a real Portsmouth greeting. Here, with an inspection of a guard of honour composed of airborne troops, began the civic welcome. In traditional fashion, the keys of the fortress are offered to the king in token of the allegiance of an ancient port. And now, London itself as the royal train enters Waterloo Station. Leaving his Pullman car, the King receives the greetings of high officials, one of the first being from the Prime Minister.
already another great wave of cheers was beginning as the royal party entered their carriage for the drive to Buckingham Palace. For their majesties, as much as for every spectator, this was a doubly joyful occasion. The end of a long journey coinciding with the 10th anniversary of their coronation. Soon the procession drew near to Westminster Abbey, recalling that other royal drive of May the 12th, 1937, the day of the enthronement of King George VI. Again, the age-old magnificence of the coronation service comes vividly to mind, the dedication of our sovereign to a task he has so faithfully fulfilled. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, after ten momentous years, the same historic route is the setting for one of the happiest homecomings London has ever seen. <music> Through the Admiralty Arch and into the Mall, with crowds along every yard of the way, cheering their King and Queen to the very gates of their home. into the palace courtyard, and soon the whole vast crowd was surging forward, a people's tribute reflecting the feelings of our whole nation. And so, once again, we have to thank our royal family for a piece of untold service to the British Commonwealth, as we greet them with a heartfelt welcome home.